Why do bands usually veer more into the pop realm as their careers progress? You'd think that they'd stick to what made them popular in the first place and double down on that sound. Is it record labels whispering in their ear, hey, look at the success you have now, just think if you made your sound a little bit more commercial? Or is it a natural symptom of getting older and just maturing as people? I don't know if James Hetfield is writing about seeking and destroying when he's in his 30s. But it makes those rare instances where bands stick to their sound admirable. By 1994, heavy metal had been declared all but dead in the wake of the grunge explosion, but one band was carrying the metal torch. Pantera basically invented the groove metal sound at a time when heavy metal wasn't cool anymore. And so when it came time to make a new album, the first since this new renaissance in popular music, instead of pandering, Pantera went the other way. What guided the whole project before any piece of music or lyrics were written was the band's mantra going in. And what better phrase than far beyond driven. It seems like sometimes a band, when they want to be that like maybe four million record mark, that they'd want to get like, oh, let's put a kind of mellow songs in it. There was like nothing mellow in this album at all. Thank you. Pantera was opening up for Megadeth one show in the early 90s when they noticed a guy in the crowd flipping off the band. They tried ignoring it, but the guy kept his finger in the air, not just for one song, but for the whole set. It eventually became too much of a distraction, so Pantera stopped the show. Lead singer Phil Anselmo got on the mic and addressed the guy, saying, Hey, in case you haven't noticed, there's 18,000 people who are really digging what we're doing, and you're the only one trying to ruin it for everybody. Well, about 10 Pantera fans took that as a marching order and promptly jumped the guy. He was beaten pretty badly, and as a result, issued a lawsuit against Pantera months later, claiming the band members beat him. The victim's dad kind of led the charge against the band and reached out to Pantera's management. He had one message for Phil Anselmo. And one of his dad's quotes was, I don't care about uh, any lawsuit. I just like to get that Phil Anselmo five minutes alone. And my manager answered him back, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> It pissed Phil off, and so he did what he would always do when angry. He wrote a song, what would eventually be the second single on Far Beyond Driven, Five Minutes Alone. Whether he's screaming those lyrics right back to the dad, or spouting off on the hypocrisy of organized religion, or venting about the dysfunctional relationship between him and his own father, Pantera and frontman Phil Anselmo ooze a hard-edged attitude front to back on 1994's Far Beyond Driven. Heading into their seventh album and their third for a major label, Pantera were bigger than ever. 1992's vulgar display of power had brought the band their first taste of fame and fortune, raising expectations for what would come next. Some at their label felt it was the right time for the band to streamline the punishingly heavy sound they'd honed in on vulgar, as Metallica had done on their 1991 Smash Black album. Instead, Pantera went the other direction and doubled down on heaviness. They had reached this pinnacle now they were kind of tapering off and writing more commercial stuff whereas we realized you know our strong point once again was was sticking to heavy metal and making it as, as, as heavy as our style would allow with becoming it is what it says you know we, we were becoming we, we had honestly we had arrived the song becoming sort of became an anthem for their mindset at the time puffing their chest out and announcing to the world they had made their mark and are here to stay. Becoming encapsulates everything that made Pantera great in the first place and can sum up the whole Far Beyond Driven album. There's Phil's brutal but technically great vocals on top of his underrated lyrics. Rex Brown holds down the bass, playing in perfect correlation with the guitar to create a heavy sound. And of course, led by arguably the greatest heavy metal guitarist of all time, Dimebag Daryl, ripping his signature blues thrash guitar. His brother, Vinnie Paul, backbones their groove sound with crazy but simple beats and a flawless chemistry with Dime. Both Vinnie and Dimebag really shine on Becoming. Dime had just gotten his, that whammy pedal. So he started playing that riff. And then I heard Vinnie's kick around his feet. And I'm going, what in the, what are you doing? He goes, oh, this is easy. Just this foot does this and this foot does this. You know, it was the coolest little gallopy kick mm -hmm. pattern that I'd ever heard. And for him, it was just like, eh, you know, what? What's the big deal? 
One day, after a big night of heavy drinking, the guys all rolled into a sound check a little worse for wear. In his hungover state, where Dimes said he came up with all his best riffs, this powerful, simple guitar lick came out of him. As usual, Vinny and Rex kicked in, and I'm Broken was born. At the time, the many years of hard moshing on stage had started to catch up with Phil, and a lingering back injury had suddenly gotten serious. It awakened a new line of thinking for him, and angry at this new reality, Phil put pen to pad. I think this was uh, one of the first times that I had this thing called vulnerability kick in. I think that was really my first glimpse into kind of screaming to the world, fucking, I am broken, somebody fucking help me here. Without significant radio or MTV play, Far Beyond Driven somehow debuted at number one on the Billboard charts, sandwiched between weeks that featured Ace of Bass and Bonnie Raitt in the top spot, making it one of the heaviest and most unrelenting records ever to do so. When asked by interviewers how they pulled it off, Dimebag simply replied, quote, because it kicks ass, how else would it be number one? With Far Beyond Driven, Pantera had the ability to come up with incredibly catchy songs without sacrificing an inch of power or heaviness. You can't deny the bone-crushing, in-the-pocket groove, killer riffs, and heartfelt lyrics that spoke of self-reliance. Yeah, Pantera probably could have achieved that by diluting their sound to be a little bit more commercial, but the very fact they didn't have to makes it an achievement all on its own. And it's why Pantera stand the test of time and are so well respected in the metal community, being one of the very few bands to actually get heavier as their success increased. Grunge or pop, be damned. Look at us now. 